five ranked and one of the baddest men to do it in the division. But is it time that we give him the official belt to make it official? The one and only Dan the Hangman Hooker joins me from Tahiti of all places. Dan Hooker, you're like a Where's Waldo, man? Where's Wally? Where in the world is uh, Dan Hooker today? How did you end up in Tahiti, brother? Um, yeah, well, I went to, uh, I went to Las Vegas for Aaron Toe's Contender Series and then... So it was just a, a a a run of a run of luck, let's say. Yeah. So I yeah. just came a couple of days earlier, and I caught the Sphere card. Um, so I watched UFC at the Sphere, then Contender Series, and got out of there. And then there's a lot of guys in, from Tahiti. There's a lot of Tahitian boys that train with us at uh, City Kickboxing, and they've been, you know, most of the boys that come out here, and I've been meaning to come for a while, but. So I just stopped in on the way home. And there's a few of them fighting <laughs> tonight on uh Tahitian Fighting Championship. And like it's a pretty big show. It's like an outdoor show here in Tahiti. So I'm here for a couple of days just enjoying um enjoying the hospitality. Yeah, beautiful, bro. And good luck to the boys. By the way, Aaron Toe, man, he showed a lot of heart and he had one of the most memorable fights so far on the Dana White Contender Series. He didn't get the contract, man, but I think this is the not going to be the last time we're going to see him in the UFC, right? Like, this guy's a no-brainer just to take a backup spot or anything coming up in the Australasian area for the UFC. Yeah, I don't think he loses um, too much stock. Uh, you know, going away, fighting once or twice on the local scene, I think getting back into the next season of Contenders is, is the shoe in Or, yeah, as you say, anything kind of comes up short notice. Um, I'd say he'd be damn near front of the line to to jump at any opportunity like that. It's it's just the it's just the game we play. Yeah, I I reckon he's a really great for the division. The UFC would be stupid not to sign him. I mean, win or lose, the guy puts his heart out there, and it's really cool. It was really cool to get to know him. He was on the show last week. Let's talk about you, bro, because here we are. We're waiting for this Charles Oliveira fight to be announced. And there is a fight announced, but it's Charles Oliveira versus Michael Chandler. Take me through that, man. I thought you guys were supposed to fight potentially in December. Isn't that the convo that Hunter had with your manager, Ash, in the lobby in that early in the morning? Oh, it is what it is, brother. Um, yeah. Oh, I get I get why why they kind of put that fight together. That's, um, that's a big fight for the division, but... Yeah, like Chandler gets, yeah, I don't know. It's a weird fight. It's a weird mm. fight. <laughs> well, I think it's a weird fight because the like, guy's already fought, like, right? Like, I was like trying to justify the fight, but nah, it's just a weird fight. Uh, yeah, that might be just because I am I might have some, I might have something up my, up my sleeve as well too there, brother. Oh, you've, you've got, uh, you're working on something there, Danny. Oh, I might be cooking and might, might, have, might have a little something on the fire there, but uh, it must be good if I'm saying nothing. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So I know you won't be able... Just before we get off this Chandler uh, Oliveira fight, I know the guys fought at UFC 262. Um, I don't know. Do you think this thing looks any different? Like, do you think Charles can get it done here? What do you What do you think this fight, this rematch goes like? Yeah, oh, I get, I get why why Chandler would want to fight. Like, obviously he gets uh, he gets by Oliveira, then um, the UFC have kind of um, promised him a title shot. I, I'm sure of it. I don't know what um, I don't know too much about what Charles will get out of it, but um, yeah, yeah, I can't see it. Um, yeah, I can't. Like, it's not like the fighters are made. Yeah, at, at our level. At, you know, when you're in the top five, top six in the division, it's it's any man, it's any man's day. It's it's kind of all of these fights are a, are a bit of a coin flip. Mm. You think it's one of those situations as well? Like you took, you wanted to fight Gamrot, right? Like you wanted to get back in there. You wanted the hardest fight, and now here you are in the top five. Now Chandler's fighting Oliveira. If if he does beat Oliveira, like Javier Mendez and Islam, they're already excited about a potential new fight for the title. Do you think there's a chance that if Charles wins, I mean, if uh, Michael Chandler wins here, that Armin misses out in his shot for the title and gets passed over? Do you still think it's Armin next for Islam? I think, yeah, I still think it's Armin next. And then um, I feel like, oh, bro, it's such a, it's such a, I can see why the, the UFC's kind of um, matching the fights that they're matching these fights is because 
they they want options, right? Because mm-hmm. if if there's just if there's just one guy that's like head and shoulders next in line for the title and it's set in stone, then um, obviously negotiating becomes very difficult for them because they're like everyone expects this fight to be made. The pressure's on the UFC to make this fight, so obviously the bloke can ask for uh, a shit ton more money, you know. So, mm. <laughs> but on the other hand, if um, UFC matches a bunch of fights and gets like three or four contenders and no one's really sure about who's next, then like it, it, it becomes like just a bit of a bidding war between the fighters. So I get why the UFC is doing it the way that they're doing it is because they want they want as many guys that make sense for the title as they possibly can. So yeah, Chandler gets by him, you know, I win my next fight. Then you got then you got three guys that um have like justification for for getting a title shot, and it becomes a yeah, it becomes a a bit of a bidding war between um between the between a lot of us. Yeah, man. Well, I'm happy that you've got something in the works, right? Because obviously Moicano and BSD are fighting next weekend, I think, and then you got Fazev sort of trying to get a fight with you as well. Um, it's kind of cool that so this this next fight that you got, this is a fight that you're excited about, an opponent that you sort of wanted initially. Yeah, like we'll we'll just see how everything plays out because obviously like the Golden Goose is um <laughs> without a dance partner as well. So like I like I got absolutely um yeah no like I got me and Connor have led no no it will at all towards each other um I don't think ever mm. and I'm I'm also going over to Spain and and I'm going along to his show. I'm getting flown out as a as a corner man for my man Oscar Willis. Yes, Oscar called. Willis. Yes, being like, yeah, he's jumping in the cage and, and oh, jumping in the ring and, and fighting bare knuckle, um, and bare knuckle fighting championship, which is obviously Con- Connor's a, a part owner now. So they're flying me out to corner and and be at the event and enjoy the event uh, over in Spain. So yeah, like it'll it'll just be interesting. Like he's without a he's without a fight. I know Connor's hungry to fight. Um, and and fight someone that uh, he can get something from and and makes a lot of sense and that's why I feel like like Chandler kind of sitting there and waiting he he and not staying active you just uh, you kind of lose like what does he get out of beating Chandler it's, he doesn't even get in the he 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 knocks out Michael Chandler in the first round Conor McGregor doesn't even doesn't even get in the top five off a of that performance which so. Therefore, like it does, it it stopped making sense for Conor McGregor to to fight Michael Chandler. Mm. Yeah, and I think like let's be honest here, because you know Michael Chandler, obviously he's had a great career, he's a good fighter and stuff. But stylistically, you and Conor, that's like fireworks, right? Like that's really the matchup there is really something. I feel like Chandler Conor fight it wasn't quite there for a lot of fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and I said. Um... I was joking. I was joking around Oscar, but joking, not joking. Oh, oh. <laughs> me and Connor, me and Connor have to send each other. That's a stipulation of the fight. We have to send each other drinking beers every single day of fight. <laughs> we have to, we have to both agree. <laughs> we have to both agree. We got maybe, maybe we can get a breathalyzer. We can send each other a failed breathalyzer test every day of fight camp, and we'll we'll get this thing squared away. Don't take me with a good time, brother. <laughs> Who do you think? Who do you think is gonna? Who do you, are you going to show him a thing or two about partying over there in Spain? You think you're going to show him a couple? Oh, of things? I don't know. There's, I don't know. There's too much I can show that man about uh, <laughs> about having a good time. I think he just does what I would do with uh, uh, with that much money. So I can't. <laughs> I would never criticize that man because if he gave me that much money, I feel like I'd be a hell of a lot worse. Fellas, do you want your grooming routine to be a one and done deal while the days of using the same trimmer for your face and your private parts are over? Thanks to our friends at Manscaped. They're coming up with the ultimate package to keep your hair trimmed from 12 to 6. Introducing the Beard Balls Bundle featuring the Lawnmower 5.0 and the Beard Hedger Trimmer for the Money Maker and another one for the boys downstairs. Get 20% off and free shipping now with the code word submission at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code word submission at manscaped.com. And fellas, real talk. I'm about to talk to you out there. The guys that are about to go on their dates or the guys that are about to go in the gym or the guys that are about to just go into work or do whatever life things you need to do. There are certain things you need to do to take care of yourself. 
Manscaped has you sorted, if you know what I mean. With the 20% off, with the code word submission, and free shipping today, the Ball and Beard Bundle will make sure that you accomplish whatever it is you're trying to do out there. What about NordVPN? It is the ultimate VPN out there. To get the best discount off your NordVPN plan, you can go to nordvpn.com forward slash submission. Now, a link will give you an extra four months on the two year plan. That's right, an extra four months. And there's absolutely no risk with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. The link is down below, or of course you go to nordvpn.com forward slash submission. What about NordVPN? You can watch your sporting events, TV shows, films which aren't available by your region by switching your virtual location. You can protect your private data like bank details, passwords, and online identity. You can switch your location anywhere to save money by purchasing cheaper flights, hotels, subscriptions. And what about the threat protection feature that protects you from viruses, malicious malware, and phishing sites? It's the fastest VPN in the world with no buffing or lagging. Premium cybersecurity for the price of a cup of coffee per month. And one NordVPN account can be used up to 10 devices. That's right, 10 devices. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash submission. Now, get the deal. Try it risk-free. It's one of the best apps in the game as well. nordvpn.com forward slash submission. Support this show so we can provide more interviews for you throughout the next few months with nordvpn.com and Manscaped now. Now back to the program. <laughs> Our boy Oscar Willis, how proud are we of him? Um, he When he told me about this fight with Ben Davis, man, I mean, it take like bare knuckle, going to Spain, doing it proper. You got to love the fact that he's doing this, right? It's like uh, Conor McGregor saying that their last pr uh, press conference, I believe, like bare knuckle is... Ben Knuckle needs to be respected and it needs to be respected by, like, it's respected by the boxers, it's respected by the fighters. Like, no one looks at Ben Knuckle and, and laughs, you know? It's not like a power slap where, where people look at it and they're just like, that doesn't make any sense. Ben Knuckle, in, in terms of fight sports, needs to re be respected. Like, I was, we were sitting there at dinner um, with Oscar and that after, after Aaron's fight and, you know, my coach Eugene Behrman was, was sitting there and, you know, he's known as the scientist and, yep, and this yep. and that. And then I said, oh, I'm going to go over and, and corner uh, Oscar. And he's fighting Bear Knuckle in Spain. And even, you know, Eugene, oh, cool. Like, cool. There's no, it, it, it's something, it's an art form that, that yeah, it demands, it, it, it demands respect taking the gloves off. Like, it's something that needs to be respected um, by all fighters. Yeah, I can't believe that this is happening in Spain and like a bull, it's like a bullfighting ring or something. It's, like this thing's like, unbelievable. It's a um, street fighter, it's a street fighter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you turn on the game, random arena, and it's like yeah, Spain yeah. bullfighter, where you'd be like, no yeah, way, yeah, man, yeah, never. Yeah. And, and now Connor's making it happen. Hey, by the way, like I know like this fight with you and Connor would probably happen in the UFC, but how cool would it be if you guys got to do this thing bare knuckle? Like I know he's looking to get exemptions. Oh, the I, mean, UFC. I, get asked, I get asked all the time, would you do bare knuckle? And I said, I would do bare knuckle for fun. Like that, that's something. <laughs> yeah, like I'll. I'll and with uh, Connor McGregor, like imagine I, that, uh, you know? Oh, that that doesn't even need that doesn't even need to be said. That's an incredible um, that's an incredible fight. Mm. Uh, just quickly, we've had a lot of people asking about you know what about Max Holloway? He's perfect for Dan Hooker. Like whatever happens in a couple of weeks for the BMF title. I know you've mentioned the BMF title a couple of times, and obviously you've got someone else in mind right now, and Conor McGregor. But um, that's a pretty fun fight there as well, right down the track for that BMF belt. Oh, definitely, definitely. Like that. That's um, like that's what the promotion wants. Options, and as a fighter, that's what you want is options. Is not to chase. Uh, yeah, not to not to corner yourself and and cut your cut your cut your options down. That that definitely is there. But he's fighting for the yeah. Like you know, I feel like that fight's there regardless of whether Max wins or loses. I feel like that that BMF fight mm. is something that there. Um, but as I said, like the, the, what Michael Chandler did wrong was, was to sit around and wait. So I can't honestly say that I'm going to sit around and wait. If I, if I can get one more in, it, it kind of becomes undeniable that BMF, um, opportunity.
Yeah, dude. I can't wait to see you mixing it up with Connor and Spain. I can't wait to watch Oscar's fight against Ben Davis, man. People need to check that. I feel like that's the biggest fight on the card for me. Anyway, um, <laughs> before we before we wrap up, I've got to ask you timeline wise, what are we looking at for the return? Like, I know you can't reveal the opponent, but could it be this year? Or are you looking early next year? If obviously Connor would be early next year, but what timeline wise, what are you looking at with this opponent, this mystery? Yeah, opponent? Oh, well, well, yeah, we're looking at um, we're looking at early early next year. Um, Jan Feb, Jan Feb, Connor, Connor. Um, we'll get it squared away then. We'll early next year. Perfect, brother. Well, man, that's a way to. That's a good way to bring in twenty twenty five for now. Good luck to the boys. In Tahiti, congratulations to Aaron. I know he didn't get the contract, but I think he made a lot of new fans from his performance. And dude, have a great time over there. I can't wait to see what's next. There he is, top five ranked, Dan Hooker. World's his oyster. I cannot wait. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you for that.